Okay, folks, I'm going to show you now how to create VLANs that we discussed, and I'm going to say a few more things about VLANs. So I'm going to go to switch one here and click on it. Now I'm going to maximize the window. Now I'm inside of switch one, and let's look at our VLAN database as it stands right now. So I'm going to execute the command show VLAN, show VLAN. So when I pull up the command, you see that you have the VLAN ID. So VLAN 1 is there by default. As I said, VLAN 1 is the default VLAN. VLAN 102, 103, 104, and 105 are also there by default, and these cannot be deleted. You also see that port 1 through port 24, Fast Ethernet, FA stands for Fast Ethernet 1 through Fast Ethernet 24, belong Fast Ethernet, Ethernet 1 through Fast Ethernet 24 and Gigabit Ethernet 1 and 2, which is 1,000 megabits per second, all belong by default to VLAN 1, where my cursor is. VLAN 102, 3, 4, and 5 have no ports in front of them, so they do not support any ports at this point. Now, I did the command show VLAN. You see this extra stuff that we don't need for CCNA? All this stuff till the bottom? We don't need this. We don't need the highlighted stuff for our CCNA. So if you execute the command show VLAN brief, it gives you a nice cleaner output and then just takes away that extra stuff uh, stuff at the bottom that you don't really need for your CCNA anyways. Now let's go ahead and create VLAN 100 using the old method. So we just simply type in the word VLAN and then if I hit question mark it asks me to type in database and then I hit question mark again it says hit the control key, I mean the carriage return. So I hit enter and now you see my prompt change from just switch and pound sign to switch VLAN pound sign, which means now I'm ready to configure the VLAN database. Now when you hit enter, when you say VLAN database and you hit enter, you will get a warning. And this warning is basically saying that it is recommended that you create your VLANs using the new method because the old method will be deprecated or taken away in future editions of the operating system. Now, I've been seeing this message for the last six or seven years, so they haven't taken it away yet. Hence, I like to teach the old method, regardless of whether it's part of CCNA or not. Now, while in VLAN database mode, I'm going to type in VLAN 100. So VLAN space question mark. It asks me to pick a VLAN between 1 and 1005 which is our normal range VLAN. So let's pick 100. And then if I say space question mark, you see that it is asking me to name the VLAN. Now, I don't necessarily have to name the VLAN. I can just hit enter at this point and it will create VLAN 100. But let's go ahead and name it anyways. Name test. And I hit enter. And you see the logging message. It said VLAN 100 has been added with name test. Now I exit out of my VLAN database mode. And let's look at our VLAN database again with the command show VLAN brief. Now you see that VLAN 100 has been created with the name test and it is active but still it has no ports assigned to it. We will get to that later on in the day, hopefully. Now, if I wanted to get rid of VLAN 100, again, VLAN database, go back into VLAN database mode, and I can use the up arrow key to scroll through my commands. So VLAN 100 name test, that's how we created it. Simply add a no in front of VLAN 100 name test. 
and this says this command is not supported by a packet tracer. So we will use another method to get rid of VLAN 100 in a minute. Let's move on to the new way of creating VLANs. So for that, I need to get into my config mode. And don't worry about the command to get into config mode just yet. I will go over it in a little bit. And now we are in config mode. The reason being, our prompt has changed, and it actually says switch config. Over here, if I type in the command VLAN, let's create VLAN 200. Nice even number. VLAN 200. Now, at this point, since I'm doing it from config mode, and this is the new way of doing it, I do not assign it a name on the same line. I actually hit enter. And I change modes to config VLAN mode, which basically means I'm, I'm in a mode where I can modify my VLAN database. Over here, I can name it. Let's name it Cisco. Why not? And I hit enter. And best practice in this case is to first exit out of this mode, back to config mode. So the command exit takes you back one mode. And then... Since we're in config mode, we can, we can execute the command show VLAN brief, except we just have to put the word do in front of it. Do show VLAN brief. If I hit enter, you see that I have now created the VLAN 200 with name Cisco. Once again, no ports are assigned to that VLAN yet. Now, VLANs are stored on a Cisco switch in flash memory in a file called VLAN.dat. So let's look at the contents of our flash memory. Show flash, simple enough. And you guys see this file? VLAN.dat, that's the file your VLAN 100 and VLAN 200 are stored in. Now I'm going to show you how to delete these VLANs real quick. I'm back in my config mode, and a simple rule of thumb to follow with Cisco, which holds true 99% of the time, and the few exceptions to the rule I'm about to tell you, I will show you the exceptions. However, the rule of thumb in Cisco to negate a command or to do the opposite of a specified command is simply to put the word no in front of it. So when we created VLAN 100, we said VLAN 100 from config mode. If I go ahead and put the command no in front of it, that gets rid of VLAN 100. Then I use my up arrow key to pull up no VLAN 100 again. I change the 100 to 200 and get rid of VLAN 200. Now, if we look at our VLAN uh, database, do show VLAN brief, you will see that VLAN 100 and 200 are missing. So that takes care of how to create VLANs and how to delete VLANs. Now, in my head, I hear a question. Can you get rid of all the VLANs by getting rid of this VLAN.dat file that we had in Flash? Sure you can. So let's go ahead and create VLAN 100 and 200 again. So I will say VLAN 100. And then just from this mode, I can go ahead and say VLAN 200, and it will create VLAN 200 automatically. I say exit, and then look at my... VLAN database, do show VLAN brief, and VLAN 100 and 200 are back. Now, if I wanted to get rid of the VLAN.dat file, I go back one mode, and the command is delete VLAN, or I could say delete flash, colon VLAN dot dat. Now, I avoid saying delete flash VLAN dot dat because if you forget to, 
if you forget to type in vlan.dat, then you are going to delete flash. And another one of these things that sits in the operating system, let me show you. Another one of these things that sits in the flash memory, I mean to say, is this bin file that you guys see that I'm highlighting. This is your operating system. So God forbid by accident you delete the contents of flash. It is just one command. You can delete your operating system. So instead of doing the command, and I'm just scrolling using the up arrow key, Okay, maybe it's not there. Instead of saying delete flash colon vlan dot dat and then hitting enter, I will simply say delete flash. No, I will simply say delete vlan dot dat and hit enter. And it will ask me delete file name vlan dot dat. I hit enter again and confirm it and hit enter. Then I go look at my vlan database, show vlan brief. And VLAN 100 and 200 should be gone. Well, actually, VLAN 100 and 200 are sitting in our running configuration. So I have to power cycle this router, I mean, this switch, to get rid of them. So we're going to go ahead and power cycle this switch. Waiting for it. Show VLAN brief. And VLAN 100 and 200 are done. Now, there is a caveat here with this command that can cause an RPE. And in our world, RPE is a resume producing event, which means you got fired. And now you need to produce your resume again. If I execute the command delete VLAN dot dat, and I hit enter. Again, this, this little tidbit is not part of CCNA, but it might help you at some point. And now it says, it's asking me, delete file name, VLAN dot dat. Some people at this point have a tendency to type in the, word, the letter Y for yes. It is asking me, delete VLAN dot dat, question mark, which means it wants me to just hit enter to confirm. But I went ahead and typed in Y anyways. If I hit enter, look at what it comes back with. It comes back with delete flash colon. If at this point I am not paying attention, I will delete all of flash, which means my operating system is gone at this point. I will break out of it using control C because I don't want to delete my flash. But be aware of this issue. Never say yes or no at the end of these prompts unless it asks you to say yes or no. If it's just a question mark or the word confirm, just hit enter at that point. This concludes the section of the class that deals with creating and deleting VLANs.